tone of lighting and lighting ratios. What is it? How to use it? I will tell you why this is a very important tool and I will show you how you can work with it in practice. To easily understand the intensity of light and shadows, we can use a light meter. You've probably heard about these tools or even used one on set. In cinematography or photography, lighting ratios compare the amount of key light to fill light. The key light is the main source of light from which shadows fall and fill light is the light that fills in the shadow areas. The lighting ratio is simply the comparison of light levels in the brightest area of the frame compared to the darkest area of the frame and is usually expressed in ratio form, specifically in f-stops. Let's start by looking at a simple example of lighting ratios and contrast. Here I have two light sources, the Godox 300 VL as a key light and the Godox 150 watt as a fill light. The fill side in this scene has a light reading of f4 and the key side has a light reading of f5.6. The difference between the fill and key is one f-stop, which equates to a contrast ratio of 1 to 2. When taking readings, you should know that each increase in f-stop equates to double the amount of light required from your source. During this process, I don't touch the fill light values, and instead I add more power to the key light. When you measure the f-stop ratio, you can sometimes get a small reading error on the fill or the key side. Because the scene can sometimes get light spilling and bouncing off different surfaces, this can affect your readings. The greater the difference between key and fill side is, the more contrast your image has. Also, when you work primarily with shadows and highlights, or shadows and midtones, your shot will most likely be in a low key style. If you want your scene to be shot in a high key style, then you should have priority in the lighter tones and the midtones for contrast and volume. Let's set up a scene and apply the knowledge of working with lighting tonality. At the beginning, I have to think about set design. This is necessary for volume within the frame. I'm filling the background with any props. These props have to be logical for the story. We are in an artist studio and I'm filling that space so that the viewer thinks that the character is actually an artist. In this scene, I use two LED lights, the Godox VL300 and 150. Light is set up like this so that I can make light and shadow contrast. I set this scene up to have a background light and a key light. Also, I want that background light to look like sun coming in from the window. The viewer should think this too. To make this light look like the sun, I am increasing the power of the light source. For the foreground, I use the Godox LED light with a soft box, so the character has a soft key light. And you can see the difference between bright lights in the background and the foreground. This is an example of lighting ratios. It can also be called working with the tonality of lighting. In the background, we have hard and bright light source, and in the foreground, we can see mid-tone lighting. These light areas have different f-stops, and the difference between these areas is light and shadow contrast. But in this case, we do not limit ourselves to working only with dark and bright areas. We can work with a wide range of tonalities. The tonality that we are talking about can have any f-stop value. On this shot, we have quite a pronounced contrast ratio between dark and bright areas. But this shot has more of a soft lighting ratio because I reduced the brightness of the backlight and this source looks like the source in the foreground. Now that we all know about lighting ratios, as well as the contrast of light and shadows, I suggest we look at lighting ratios in a more simple method without a light meter because I'm not sure that you will always need a light meter to work with light. Light meters were needed for when working with film negatives but with modern day digital cameras, you can see all the information about the exposure in the camera or on a monitor. I will show you how to work with it without a light meter. When we work with different light intensities, we have several tonalities. I mean, we have different f-stop values of the key and fill light. It's important to note that when you work with light and shadow contrast, it doesn't always refer to highlights and shadows. This contrast can be achieved through very small variations within the tonal range. For example, in a high key lighting setup, the difference between the key and fill side can be as small as half a stop of light, whereas in a low key lighting, 
this difference can be two full stops. What is this tonal range we are referring to? When we talk about shadows and light, we mean two qualities or values, light and dark. Simple. However, within the entire tonal range, there are a wide number of values that lay in between highlights and shadows. It expands this concept significantly from working with just light and shadow from two values to multiple different values. For a simple example, let's look at three values, with the new value, the third one, being midtones. Let's look at a scene that implements this theory of contrast via different tones of lighting. We try to identify the approximate values of tonality to understand the lighting ratios within the scene. For the volume, I will use light and shadows contrast, just like in the previous scene. For this, I choose the silhouette light of the character. This scene has two light sources, the backlight from the right room area and soft and diffuse backlight with left side. To make the scene look more voluminous, I put props on the background. The next step, for my taste, I added a little bit of haze for beams of light and for the contrast of the dense atmosphere. You can choose what image style you want to create. If it is hard contrast style, you can choose two extremely different values, shadows and highlights. If you want the shot to look softer, use midtones and highlights, or shadows. This is all very individual, and you can use this theory as you wish. For this shot, I wanted to use more contrast style, and so I added highlights here with the first LED light source, midtones with the second source, and dark shadows in the foreground. I did it without a light meter, I just see bright, mid, and shadow areas with my eyes. And you can use this method without needing additional equipment. Working with several tones within a frame can help convey a mood, feeling, or something important to the audience. Also, it can show viewers what kind of light is in the scene? Are there any lamps? Or maybe is it the sun or moon? Different tonality of light should be motivated by their true sources. Sometimes, for a more detailed understanding of tonality, you can use the waveform tool within your camera. This tool can show you where it's bright, mid, and dark within your frame. So, for these tasks, I didn't use any light meter, but you can if you feel more comfortable. Many people can see the difference between dark and light areas, and for this task it's very helpful to use tools like false colour or waveform. False colour can show you where the light's coming from and how powerful that light is within your frame. Some cameras have this tool built in, like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras. They have false colour, whereas Sony, Canon and Panasonic cameras have the waveform tool. Philosophy of Lighting, Mood and Brightness we are smoothly moving from technical tools to lighting philosophy. Contrast tools are just a tool. When you use and practice it, you can create attractive and volumetric shots. But have you ever thought about the fact that these tools can be visual language that can not only make the frame beautiful, but also convey the necessary emotions to viewers? Let's talk about mood and brightness of the lighting in the scene. You've probably heard or used low-key light and high-key lighting techniques. In theory, low-key and high-key have very different exposure contrast ratios. For example, when we are looking at a shot with low-key lighting, we can see an abundance of shadows in the frame. The difference between f-stops in tonality of the image is quite large. Normally, the darkest area of the scene with low-key light has very low f-stop number. Also, Almost always, the low-key lighting is used with light and shadows contrast. When we are watching shots with high-key lighting, we can see an abundance of highlights and mid-tones in the frame. But in this case, the difference between f-stops and tonality are more subtle. Yes, we can use light and shadows contrast, but the shadows will not look as deep. If we want to work in a high-key lighting style, then the contrast will be built between the mid-tones and the highlights, and the difference between the darkest area and the lightest area will be less than if we were using a light key. 
The low key and high key are visual tools for working with mood of the viewers. When I read a script and see that the action is a happy character showing the viewers a chocolate bar and pronouncing an advertising motto, I feel the concept of this project will look very strange with a dark or low key style. And on the contrary, when the character sings about a broken heart and lost love, I similarly think that a high key lighting look would be very unsuitable choice. I know that low key lighting looks cinematic, but you should analyze the project's script and think about the brightness of your work. What type of key light style will be a good choice for the overall story? This is how we as filmmakers can work with the mood of a video. I recommend working with low key and high key anyway, whatever your preference may be, because a good cinematographer should be very flexible and can make the most out of any scenario by working with multiple tools and different styles. How to use contrast ratios in practice. When you imitate a natural light source with something artificial, you are most likely going to have an object or character which the light falls on, and the light source which produces this light in the frame. So, here's the most stupid and most common mistake. It is when the amount of light on the character differs from the amount of light coming from the source. The amount of light, as we know, we can count with a light meter or with a false color tool. This process is key light matching. Your task is to make the light equal, coming from both the source as well as on the subject. This will help the light not to look fake.